thanks. Thanks, Don. Uh, I appreciate everyone sticking around. I'll try to make this fast. In fact, I should just maybe speak to this slide. I apologize. I do actually have four more slides. I'll try to go through them quickly. One of the things I was thinking, just, just looking at this picture reporting for the Berkeley Stanford Mafia, uh, is you know we've just been doing this for a year, and so much has happened. And I'm just looking at, at some of the folks here, for example, uh, in the front row, here's, here's Max, a student I started working with when I was in Toronto, has now graduated, move, is, is moving, to, moving to JPL. Uh, we have other students. I, we appropriate Jenny, Jenny patients as, as part of our team. Jenny is trying to hide back here, uh, but her, her student, Kim Wardong, is, is graduating this summer. So look out for her in the job, job market. And it's, you know, it's really exciting to see all, all the exciting things that are being reported on today and, and the, thing, the intellectual excitement that's with, with, within these groups. So let me, let, let me just give you a very quick overview of, of, of some, of our, some of our focuses. One of the, the thing that's really a, a large center of, center of our attention is a big program on the Gemini South Telescope using the Gemini Planet Imager. We have an 890 hour program to image systems, young stellar systems with the Gemini planet imager, look for debris disks, look, 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 look for planets. And so one of our principal problems here is organizing all this information, or organizing the database of targets, organizing the data, and getting that data, and, and turning it into pictures of planets. And this, this, this picture tries to illustrate some of the tools that we have. So if you'd like to learn some of the ways that we've solved these problems, and how we consume vast quantities of CPU time at MSERC, please, please come and talk to us. The, the bottom line here, this is, this is, this is Jason Wang's uh, processing system for ingesting the data and turning out contrast curves and excreting planets. That, that's, that's our, base, that's our basic, basic product for the statistical analysis that, that, that's ongoing. Uh, we're, of course, very interested in individual planets, looking at their spectra, characterizing them. We're beginning to understand how to extract, extract high fidelity spectra from, from the Gemini planet imager and from, from other high high contrast imaging platforms so we can characterize cloud layers and maybe eventually ab abundances. So uh, the perhaps the biggest and most pleasant surprise is right at the beginning of, the, of, of some of these high contrast imaging campaigns we're thinking about, let's do polarimetry because you know, we at least know that debris disks exist. And so one of the things we've been deluged with is a vast array of different morphologies of, of debris disks and uh, uh, morphologies, but also po polarimetric properties of these disks. And, and this, this is a, a, a subset of some of the systems that we've imaged in papers, papers that are impressed. I would like to draw your attention to the picture of a very familiar system. It's known as the MOTH 861005. A Nexus postdoc at Berkeley, Tom Esposito, is working on a unified model for describing these debris disks that in, in includes understanding the forced eccentricity and inclination due to an exoplanet and how that produces disks that can explain many of these morphologies, especially his a particular case that's demonstrated in, in, in the case of the case of the moth. And then the other thing that we're focusing a great deal on is, is understanding the systematic errors in high contrast imaging with a special focus on doing astrometry. And one of the things that we want to watch is the little little dot. So of course we we choose a, a blue color table so we can say you can watch the little blue dot move. This this is one of the planets we discovered, 51 Airy. Uh, in the middle column, there's some preliminary estimates of the orbit of 51 Airy. Uh, but in other systems, for example, Beta Pic, for which we have astrometry back from the discovery date and in an intensive campaign, we now have extraordinarily exquisite measurements with sub milli arc second astrometry produced by this, this astrometric, astrometric technique of forward modeling that is invented by a combination of Laurent Pierre and J Jason Wang. And shown here, the disappointing news here uh, is no transit. The Hill Sphere does transit, but the planet will not transit the, the star. Uh, other things we're doing is looking at resolved spectroscopic binaries and bringing this as a more general technique to look, for example, at members, members of the beta pit moving group, refine ages and, and masses, and hence evolutionary models, models for, those, for those objects. So that's, that's, that's my last slide, but as the last speaker, I do take the prerogative to thank some of the amazing people who've made Nexus possible. And Mary is here, 
and Don is here, and Don is, Don, <coughs> Sean, Sean, Sean is here. Uh, I, I think uh, on my list, yeah. <laughs> Nat, 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 Natalie, uh, I, I, I think we should take, in addition to thanking all the speakers, we, we need to thank all, all, all these folks for making this amazing organization possible. <laughs> Sure, sure. And I, I, th I think almost everything here, is, if it's not uh, submitted, it's, go it's going to be submitted within within a week or two. So these these are all very close close to being to being done. Oh, so, is there, what, can you, what can be gleaned by observing? I mean, is there, so, can, hope, you, can you predict when the transit occurs? Oh, oh, oh yeah, we, we, we know when, when that, uh, I shouldn't say we know. Uh, oh, oh, so the, so the question is, is related to this particular picture. Maybe I can borrow your pointer again. And, and so what, what's shown here is uh, the little disk here is, is the actual angular diameter of the star of beta pic itself. Uh, the blue lines are the ensemble, so represent the pos posterior distribution of possible orbits. And then the orange, there we go, that, that's half the Hill sphere of a beta pig P, and this is the full Hill sphere. And so, so the, the motivation really, really, really goes back to uh, 1984, when there was a purported transit event of, beta, of an object in the beta pig system. And there is a story that you can tell that that is the same object that was eventually discovered by Anna Marie Lagrange's group in, in Grenoble that, that's beta pick B. However, this, this says that the planet will not, but still, if, if, since this is such a rich system, if there's gravitationally bound material associated with beta pick P, there are opportunities to, for an intensive photometric monitoring campaign during, during this transit in late 2017. So we know, we know, or I should say, Jason knows <laughs> when it's going to happen, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's very much a fishing expedition, but it would be an extraordinary opportunity to scrutinize the near planetary environment in such such a young system. Anybody else? All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh! So, so, so this is this is this is the, the, you see the magic thing here. Here's his polar, polarization. Down. Polarization down too for the oh, so yeah. So this. Uh, all left no, this this is a, this is a pre pre previous. So this this paper is you can see the, the this is a previous observation. So, uh, so, so one of the, one of the things in, in this this particular survey we're doing, uh, we do a reconnaissance, very fast exposure, and then systems that that show spatial res result of mission, we, we we go back and spend an hour on. So that that explains the difference in, in signal noise. Okay, so I think we're 